Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech one more time. Today we're going to take a look at another one of ASUS's Z77 boards that has hit the market and has uh, been released in preparation for Intel's third generation processor, um, well third generation Core i7 processor. And this one is going to be the P8Z77-V. This is a full-size ATX product as you can see from the bo uh, box here. And it has quite a few features as we're going to be able to take a look at right on the front of the box. Of course, one of their big pushes is that they've now moved the Digi Plus, it's calling it Smart Digi Plus, into their mainstream lineup. Um, the Digi Plus has sort of been there, but they're extending that feature across the entire product line now. So you're going to see this more and more as those top-end features that they have in the Republic of Gamers boards are actually going to filter down into these other products. It's bringing that enthusiast quality design and concept down into the mainstream market and then uh, you know, probably a little bit further down into some of even the entry level and the channel products. But let's go ahead and take a look at this board and, the, and what we've got on the front of the box. As you can see here, we have our ASUS logos down at the bottom. These are the square ones that they've been using for a little bit to sort of emphasize that. They have the Wi-Fi Go that's going to be on this board. You have your uh, power controls. You have your UA, uh, SP, USB. That's going to be their USB 3.0 boost that's down there. You also have your network eye control. We've talked a little bit about that. That's a great feature which allows you to select per application the performance profile that you want to apply to it when it comes to networking. This means that let's say you've got Netflix and you want Netflix to have priority on your network when you're running it. You take that application and you click on it, you highlight it, and bam, it's going to have the priority when you're running it. It's going to give you the better network performance. And that's going to be uh, tied into the, you know, just the, both of the networking cards that are on there. You have your Easy BIOS flashback. This is a USB stick. You don't need a memory. You don't need memory. You don't need a CPU. All you need is power and a USB key that's properly formatted and you can flash this BIOS. This is great if you do happen to get this in for whatever reason when you buy it in the store it doesn't have the best BIOS or doesn't have a BIOS that's compatible with your RAM. You can go grab that BIOS using another system and bam you're off and running. So it's a really nice feature. You have uh, support for NVIDIA's SLI, uh, of course Crossfire. You also have the uh, Lucid Logic's Virtu M MVP, which ties into both Sandy Bridge as well as into Intel's third generation Core i7 processor, which we uh, can't talk too much about. But the Virtu MVP we can. This is just going to allow you to kind of get the best of both worlds solution, and we'll go into mo uh, more detail on that when we cover the second half, the half of this board, as well as uh, we do have planned a, uh, an article specifically about the Virtu MVP. Asus has also been uh, adding in some other nice features. They've been building towards this audio as a feature concept, which we've seen in some other boards, and now ASUS is actually really catching up in that. Again, in the ROG boards, you've seen it, but it hasn't always filtered down into your mainstream or even your channel boards. Now we're seeing this with your uh, Digital Theater Surround, Ultra PC2, and your DTS Connect. These are great features that are going to allow you to get the most out of the audio that's processed through here. Even if you are using a Realtek uh, audio chipset or something along those lines, these Dolby Theater Surround uh, features are going to just bring out that much more uh, life into the audio. Of course, it's a Z77 chipset, and the rest of the features on this side there are just, uh, you know, pretty much what you would expect in here. So, let's go ahead and flip it around and take a look at what's on the back of the box. On the back of the box, you've got, uh, you know, a little bit more information. Of course, you have your outline of your uh, the board, the spec sheet. You have the more information on your Smart Digi Power Control, the dual intelligent processors with the Smart Digi Power Control. We'll talk about that again when we cover the more of the performance side. You have your Wi-Fi Go that allows for DLNA streaming and PC remote control. These are features that are going to combine to allow you to use some of these DLNA products and just stream directly to your system or even stream directly from your system to another device. This means you don't have to have an external hard drive. You can just stream straight from your device. They don't have to download the, the movie onto, their, onto that system that's inside your home. It just literally streams it bit by bit out to that system so it can be watched from anywhere. Of course, we've talked a little bit about Fan Expert 2. This is a great feature which allows you to actually create automatic profiles to specifically identify which fan and what location inside your case is attached to what fan header inside the system. I don't know if you've ever gone through that hassle where you're trying to figure out exactly which fan header is attached to what. But it can be a pain. This is just going to give you a little bit easier uh, method of finding that out directly from software that's inside Windows, inside of the AI suite uh, application or bundle of applications. And again, the Lucid Logic Virtue MVP, which can allow for 
uh, better graphical performance in your Sandy Bridge and your uh, next generation Core i7 processors when those uh, internal graphics processors are functioning. They allow them just to keep up uh, limited frame tearing, but you can also get the benefit of some of the computational power uh, while keeping the frame rate of an add-in card. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this unboxed, get the board out, and all of the all of the uh, nice accessories that come in it, and we will show you all of that. Okay, let's take a look at what you get inside the box. We'll go through the uh, the normals first. You have, of course, a manual. You have a driver's DVD that's going to have all your drivers and utilities. They have two separate installers, ASUS's install all. Of course, on there you're going to have some utilities you won't want. We do recommend a manual install so you're not saddled with Google Chrome and a browser config utility which does nothing but every time you open it up tells you what online games are available. Um, you do have a, uh, a user guide for the Wi-Fi Go Fan Expert 2 Network Eye Control and the USB Charger Plus. Those are some exclusive features from uh, ASUS. And of course you have a, a Wi-Fi Go card user guide. These are going to be separate manuals that are going to give, just give you a little bit more in detail information on how to get that stuff set up. Of course like we showed you with the M Pro you have HDMI 1.4 3D version compatibility. You have your ASUS as usual, uh, SATA 2 cables, there's SATA 3 cables, your Q-Connects, you have your uh, IO shield. This is not going to have the padding like we've seen. That's one thing we would like to see trickle down. And you're going to have a small SLI slash crossfire bridge that comes in the box. Now the next thing is going to be your Wi-Fi Go utility. This is going to be a small card. And this is literally it. This is all you get. This is very similar to what we showed you in the, uh, the Maximus 4 gene or 5 gene where they had this card that plugs directly into the board and it draws its power. The difference here of course is that you don't have the option to drop in a, uh, an SSD on this. But it's going to have that card that you're going to see. It's going to be connected by a mini PCIe right there. And it's going to plug directly into the board and you're going to push your antenna, which is one of ASUS's stand-up antennas here, with your little magnet. So you can even tack that onto the side of the case. It'll plug straight into this. And that's going to be your Wi-Fi card. That's going to give you wireless con uh, connectivity on this device, on the P8Z77V, and let you connect that way. So. It's not the best bundle we've ever seen, but it is a very good bundle, and we know that some of the features and products that will come inside that driver's and utilities DVD are just going to add more value to this. Again, that's all part of ASUS's new plan, or program, I should say, that they're pushing the features that make sense to the market that this is designed for. As you've seen with the M Pro and the Maximus 5 Gene, there are feature sets that are at each level that make sense to the people that are buying them. Uh, wireless connectivity here is definitely going to make sense to this kind of system just for the benefit, you know, the extra bonuses that it have. It has that DTS Ultra PC2 and the DTS Connect so that Wi-Fi is going to be good for streaming that information back and forth as well as that network eye control is going to be great for that. Uh, so we're going to take a look now at the physical board itself, show you some of the design choices there as well as just the basic layout and some of the features that are evident on the board. Okay, so we have the P8Z77-V out, and we're going to take a look at the layout of the board. The first thing we'll do is we'll start off at our normal spot that we kick things off with, and we'll just take a look at the upper, low, you know, upper side of the board. Of course, it's going to be dual-channel memory. This is going to support Sandy Bridge, and of course, as we mentioned, the next generation of uh, the Core i7 processor. You have your ATX power. You have your Memo K button that's going to be over here. Uh, you have a couple of... Um, Actually, yeah, you have two four-pin fan headers. This is playing into something we've uh, heard from ASUS. They're actually going to be a minimum of four four-pin PWM fan headers that are going to be used for control on the board. Actually, let me correct that. That's five four-pin fan headers are going to be on the board. So you're going to be able to have those four-pin fans that are going to be able to control their RPM, their speed, all of that. It's going to be great, and that plays into that fan expert, too, that we've talked about. Of course, you have your 1155 socket. ASUS has a little bit different cover now, so you're actually at less risk of damaging the pins. We do like this new cover that they're putting on here. So it's not clipping inside, so you're not going to touch those pins. You have your solid capacitors. Of course, ASUS still maintains good cooling. The cooling on this one is uh, kind of chunky, but it's, it's still got enough surface area that you're going to be able to keep this cool as long as you have some good airflow crossing, crossing this. You have CPU and a CPU optional fan header that are right here. That's great for those air coolers that have the option for two fans. Of course, you have your 8-pin power connector, and we've been noticing that ASUS has been actually putting in a little bit more space there so that you can get your hands in. 
it's just going to make it easier for you to, to get that in there, although we still will always recommend that you use uh, an extension cable for this. All right, looking back through here, we can see that they have their AS Media USB 3.0 controller in here. But you'll also see right in between these two right here, you have a pinout. This is exactly where you're going to put that Wi-Fi Go card. It's going to sit right here. There's the pins there, and of course you have the hole for you to uh, mount it to the board. As it does have a screw that will keep it in place. Let's go ahead and rotate the board here, and we'll look at the bottom. You do have your uh, couple of 1X slots. Of course you have your PCIe Generation 3 and you also have two PCI slots and a couple of uh, original PCI Generation 2 slots that are going to be down here. Now if we flip this over and you take a look at your pinouts, all of these, it, with the exception of the top one which is your uh, PCIe Generation 3, the other two are going to be 8 electrical. You can see that by the number of pins that are put in place here. They didn't leave them blank like you'll see on some boards where they're just open. They actually built this specifically with that in mind. So this board is going to be in use for that, um, for this type of design where you're not going to have the full X16 on any of the other slots. This is going to be for your SLI and Crossfire. Um, of course, looking down here, you can see that ASUS has a great tracing layout that they've been working on. This is uh, in order to help improve performance and help improve the speed of the memory that you can use on these systems. So you're just going to have a lot more, you're going to have a more stable board, uh, especially in terms of memory when you use an ASUS product here, especially because of that trace tuning that they've done for that, those, uh, you know, from the CPU to the memory slots. Of course you have the newer heatsink design here for the Z77. This is kind of a nice looking uh, heatsink that we actually like this one. And it's spread out enough that it should keep this fairly cool even though we do know that the Z77 chipsets get, gets very hot. Of course you have a list of, uh, you know, have a nice little grouping of USB 2.0 ports. You have your uh, PPM module. This is a 20 plus 1 pin module. So that's going to, uh, you know, be careful if you're using one right now. You know, if you're using a 19 or an older one, it needs to be TPM 1.2 and also needs to be 20 plus 1 pin in order to operate on this board. All right, you also have your switches to turn your TPU off and your EPU off, although we're not exactly sure why you'd want to do that, but they are available. Now we'll look at the uh, slots here. You'll notice that you have four SATA 3G, uh, SATA 6G, 1 and 2, and SATA 6G that's also on here. These two right here are going to be from the PCH and then you're also going to have an additional one that runs off of a, an AS Media controller that's on this board. Alright, so that covers the basic features of the, the general board and now we'll take a look at the, uh, the I.O. panel. Of course you have your USB 3.0, you have two of them. One is going to be run from Intel, one is going to be run from AS Media. It's going to play in your USB 3.0 uh, boost. They both run uh, probably about the same. I believe the AS Media might have a little bit of a performance lead on the Intel one, but we'll have to wait and see. Of course, you have good video out options. You have your DVI, you have VGA, you have HDMI and uh, DisplayPort. You actually have an Intel Ethernet controller on this board. It's at that level where you're going to get that. going to give you a little bit better performance, a little bit more compatibility. Interestingly enough, you only have two USB 2.0 ports on the back of this board. That's odd in that usually you see a lot of companies will want to push that USB 2.0. Here you have multiple USB 2.0. They're just going to come in the form of headers that you can attach to like the front of your case or something along those lines. But on the back you have two and those as you can see right here they're actually meant for uh, keyboard and mouse. So and then of course you have your audio that we talked about with an optical out. So that about covers everything that we've got going on as far as the basic features of the uh, P8Z77-V. It looks like it's going to be a great board. Of course, we can't wait to get it up on our test bench and go ahead and run it through its paces. Now, as with everything that we've reviewed and we've covered from ASUS, you can see the direction that they're taking as they build these boards. They're improving it and they're bringing those high-end features that they know the enthusiasts love and that they see work at that top-of-the-line stuff, and they're bringing it down into the more mainstream products where you can get the benefit of it at a reduced price. Um, of course, some of these components are going to Im increase the price of the ASUS board, but when you're looking at a system and you start noticing that the specifications as far as the chipset and all of that are very similar, what you're going to want to be interested in are going to be the features, the component choices, what do you have on the board, and that's where we're seeing ASUS make that shift already dramatically in order to bring that to you, not just at their top end, but also in their mainstream line and even further down into their channel boards and into those products there. And we'll just continue, I believe we'll continue to see this as we move forward. So that covers everything that we've got to show you here on the P8Z77V. 
we do have a couple more Seuss products in the, in the lab that we're going to be bringing to you. And we're going to get this one up on the test bench and we'll run it through its paces and let you know exactly how it works. As always, if you like this, please click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends and subscribe so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.